Hey everybody, welcome to the third video um, over the chapter one, section four, absolute value section. In this video, I'm gonna go over um, how to find an extraneous solution. So an extraneous solution uh, pretty much means like mathematically it's there, like when you solve the problem, you get this answer, but when you plug it back in, it doesn't work. Um, or when you look at the graph, it doesn't show up on the graph. And so that's basically what it means to be extraneous, and then I, I can talk more detailed about it um, when we're actually uh, doing the problems uh, itself. So I put this at the very top of the paper. You might have an extraneous solution when you have a variable on both sides, but absolute value bars on just one. That's because when you plug in your number, remember, absolute value always goes positive. So if you plug in a number to this side and it goes negative, but this side, it would end up going positive because once you take the absolute value of it, it goes positive. Then you have a positive number equals a negative number, and that's why it's extraneous. Um, so let me show you exactly what I mean. So you're going to solve these the same way we've been doing them. Um, you begin it by just um, you know starting it with solving it like normal without the absolute value bars. So I need to get my h's on one side, so I'm gonna minus 11h to the left-hand side, and that's gonna get me negative 14h. This h does not look good. It doesn't look any better that way, does it? Negative uh, 14h equals seven. So divide both sides by negative 14, and I get h equals negative 1 half. All right, so now that I've done that, I have to flip the signs on one side of the equation. So I like to just work with the right-hand side. So rather than saying 11h, I'll say negative 11h. And rather than saying plus seven, I'll say minus seven. So I flip the signs, and now I'll just solve it again. So I will plus 11h over this time under the negative 3h. And I'm going to get, oh, that's going to make 8h equals negative 7. So when I divide, I'll get h equals negative 7 over 8. And so I have my two solutions. So let's look at the graph to see which one is extraneous. So when I plug in negative, the absolute value of negative 3x, because I had to change the h to an x, and then 11x plus 7, I get negative 0.5 from my solution. So remember, negative 1 half is 0 0.5. 7 over 8 is not 0.5. Um, so that would mean this one is extraneous. So that's what it looks like on the graph. It's like, okay, I got these two answers, but why is only one answer showing up? And so if you look at the graph, you're like, oh, I see it only intersects once. But mathematically, why is that working? Well, remember, or why is it not working, I should say? Remember what we said about absolute value. Whatever you plug in here, it's going to end up going positive. So um, we're going to do this step right here. Where I'll just write check. And so I'm going to plug in my answers. So I had... Um, negative one-half for the first answer. So I'm going to say the absolute value of negative one-half uh, times negative three, and then equals, and it was 11 times negative one-half plus seven. Okay, so um, let's just evaluate each side separately. This is going to say the absolute value of 1.5, or 3 over 2, um, and then this is going to say um, 11 times negative 1 half is negative 5.5 plus 7, so that's uh, positive 1.5. So does the absolute value of 1.5 equal 1.5? Yes, it does. Um, you can even write a um, final statement here that this equals that. Um, Oops, I wrote 0.15, I don't know why. And uh, yeah, so that's why that one works. So let's do the next one, let's do the 7 eighths one. So I'm gonna plug in uh, the absolute value of negative three times negative seven over eight, 
and then that should equal 11 times negative 7 over 8 plus 7. So when I do the absolute value of negative 3 times negative 7 over 8, um, well, just multiplying negative 3 times negative 7 over 8 is going to get me a positive 21 over 8. And so when I do the absolute value of that, that's just still positive 21 over 8. Um, and then when I do this, this is uh, going to equal the, the right-hand side. Sorry, I just said this. Um, 11 times negative 7 over 8 plus 7, guess what that's going to equal? Negative 21 over 8. But I just said that the absolute value positive 21 over 8 is going to be positive 21 over 8. Even if this was still negative on the inside, once you take the absolute value of it, it's going to go positive. So this does not equal that. And so in order for it to be extraneous, um, it has to be the exact same number, just like uh, the positives equaling a negative. So that's pretty much what's going on. I can't plug in, like, if this ended up equaling 2 and this equaled 6, that's not extraneous. It's just not a solution. Um, an extraneous solution is when you solve it, it appears to be in the solution, but when you plug it back in, it gives you a false answer, um, like the positive, uh, the positive number of it equals the negative number of it, which is just not true. So when you're typing into the calculator, you know when you type in um, equations, like you could type in this top part here, and it'll give you a true or false statement. But like I said, if you plug in a number, you need to see, in order for it to be extraneous, you need to see that it's equaling basically the same number, but one's positive and one's negative. So when you're typing it into the calculator, only do one side at a time. So this is me plugging in negative 3 times a negative 7 over 8, and then this is me typing in 11 times negative 7 over 8 plus 7. So I'm just typing in one side of the equation at a time, and so you can clearly see... Um, that this equaled 21 over 8, and then this equaled negative 21 over 8. Um, and that's how you can tell if it's extraneous or not. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. Here I have 3i minus 4 equals 2 times i minus 2. So if you have a number on the outside of your absolute value, you can uh, just distribute it. So you have 3i minus 4 equals... Um, the absolute value of 2i minus 4. And, oh, I guess I can just take away the absolute value bars, and then I can go ahead and solve. Um, so let's get all our i's to one side. So 2i smaller than 3i, so I'll minus 2i over. And so if I canceled one thing on the right-hand side of the equal sign, then I'm going to cancel one thing on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So I'm going to add 4 over to the other side. So I'm getting all my i's on one side and then all my regular numbers on the other. So I got 3i minus 2i, that's just 1i, or just right i. And then I have negative 4 plus 4, so that's going to be 0. So i equals 0. So we finished with that one. So now I just need to flip the signs on one side. So I got 3i minus 4, and instead of saying positive 2i minus 4, I'll say negative 2i plus 4. And then I will do what I just did. I will add 2i to the other side. So that cancels one thing on the right-hand side. So cancel one thing on the left by plusing 4 over. And so I'm not going to get 0 this time. And um, I'm going to get 5i for the left-hand side equals, and then 4 plus 4 is 8. So I have 5i equals 8, which means I have to divide both sides by 5. And then I get i equals 8 over 5. So I'll be asking you to justify which one is extraneous or not. So um, when I say justify, I want you to do this step, plug it in. Um, but if you want an idea as to what's going to be extraneous or not, just look at the graph. I always like to graph these. So let's look at the graph first to see which one should be extraneous or not. So here's my graph, and it intersects at 1.6. If you were to do 8 over 5 as a decimal, 
that is 1.6. It's definitely not zero, right? So, um, yeah, so that means this is the true answer, that zero is going to be your extraneous one. So let's just check uh, that zero one out. Let's justify that. So I'm just going to plug in zero. So I have uh, three times zero minus four. And that'll equal negative four. Um, well, I'll go back. Um, let's just set up the right hand side too. So that was two times the absolute value of x minus two, so times zero minus two. And so this is gonna say um, zero minus four equals two times the absolute value of negative two. And um, so this will say negative four equals what's two times two. Because once you do the absolute value, now I'm just multiplying. So I changed the brackets to parentheses. So this says negative 4 equals 4. So this is what I mean. It's, that's an extraneous solution um, because it is equaling, the negative number is equaling positive. So that's, you know, that's not good. So say it's extraneous, and that's how you prove it as extraneous. And once again, just to be thorough here, uh, if you're typing this into the calculator, just plug it into the left-hand side, press enter, you see it gets negative four, and then type it into the right-hand side separately, press enter, and it's gonna give you positive four. So when I'm showing my work by hand, I'm, you know, I'm you're breaking it down step by step, like just evaluating it in my head. But if you use the calculator, um, you need to show me this step, and then show me this step, okay? The, so I'll circle it. This is what I'm looking for when I'm looking for you um, proving that something is extraneous or not, okay? So let's do one more example here. And so I have 3j plus 5 equals 1 half times absolute value of 3 plus j. So I don't like distributing um, fractions. So in the last video, I showed you that if you want to get rid of a fraction, just flip it and multiply it to the other side. So I'm going to do uh, 2 over 1, because that's flipping 1 over 2. And then if you multiply it to the other side, I, I put this in parentheses so you remember to distribute it, because it's not just do 2 over 1 times 3j. It's do 2 over 1 times 3j and 2 over 1 times 5. So that's going to give me 6j equals, uh, 6j plus 10 equals, and then the absolute value of 3 plus j. All right, so at this point, um, that took care of the fraction. Now I can just, you know, drop the absolute value bars and solve. So 6j plus 10 equals 3 plus j. So get your j's on one side, so I'll minus this over. So that cancels one thing on the right-hand side, so cancel one thing on the left, which means I have to minus 10 over. And so I'm going to get 5j equals 3 minus 10 is negative 7. And so I'll divide 5, divide 5. And so I get j equals uh, negative 7 over 5. And then if you were to um, do the decimal of that, um, it would be negative 1.4. So I get this for my first j answer. And then I'm going to go... And I'm going to flip my sign, so I'm going to say 6j plus 10 equals negative uh, 3 minus j, because it was 3 plus j. So now I will get uh, my j's to one side, so plus j over. So I canceled one thing on the right, now let's cancel one thing on the left. So I have 6j plus j, that's 7j, and I have negative 3 minus 10 that's going to be negative 13. So when I divide, I get j equals negative 13 over 7, which is about negative 1.86. The squiggly equal signs indicates that you rounded. Um, so let's look at the graph to see which one's extraneous, and then I'll have to justify it as well. 
So when I plug it into the graph, I'm plugging in the original left-hand side and the original right-hand side, and they intersect at negative 1.4, so that first solution works out. So we're going to justify that the second solution is extraneous. So rather than write check, I'll write justify. Um, and so I'm plugging in. When you plug it in, don't plug in the, the decimals if you rounded it. Plug in the fraction. So I'm doing 3 times negative 13 over 7 plus 5. And then that should equal 1 half times the absolute value of 3 plus negative 13 over 7. And um, so I'll close this parentheses. And so, you know, type it into the calculator. You're going to get negative 4 over 7 equals positive 4 over 7. So remember, it's got to equal the same number, but one's positive, one's negative, so that doesn't work. So that's how you know for sure it is extraneous. And then once you've shown that it's extraneous, you know what your one real solution is, and you're done. So uh, before I close the notes, I will say this. You're not always going to have an extraneous solution when you have a variable on both sides. And um, by absolute value bars on just one, um, all these graphs are intersecting with, with a line, right? I, what if I drew this line and it was going more, you know, more this way? Well, then that's intersecting twice, you see? So it's still quite possible to get um, two solutions. I just encourage you to look at the graph to see um, if you need to justify whether one solution is extraneous or not, because uh, the graph will show you how many times you, you intersect, okay? And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.